Right then, so it's a it's a whole new day, and um, uh, yeah, I kind of finished off all this last night. So um, yeah, what I did was I put a, a rod through the small ends, put a block of wood underneath so I could tighten all this up, and uh, I've uh, tightened all these nuts up there, uh, torqued them all down. Um, uh, yeah, put the oil pump on. That's all tightened down now, um, and uh, cut the gasket down so that fitted a lot better. And put that on. I also had to put in um, the two crankcase bolts here because that one's behind that, so it's a bit tricky to get to. So, um, so that's all done, dusted, and all all ready to go now. Um, I can show you actually. It's all nice now. All goes round, lovely, jubbly, uh, which is which is great. A um, couple of other bits that I've done which I haven't told you about which I probably should have told you about but you know I've been um, doing bits and bobs you know if it's not worth filming I don't bother filming it you know anyway um, so small ends of reamed those these are all reamed out um, you have to you have to ream well if they were the right size for the gudgeon pins they were banged on but once you compress them into the small end uh, kind of housing they actually crush down a little bit quite a lot surprisingly so I took a couple of thou off those with a reamer, so they're um, they're spot on now, as you can as you, as you can see, lovely, no play in that, nice and loose what's in there, which is great. Same on the other side, uh, so they're bang on. Um, valve guides were reamed as well because we you know we're reaming, so we might as well ream the rest of it. The other thing as well, um, before I put the valves in the head. Hang on a second. Before I put the valves in the head, this surface here, um, it had a couple of knocks and a little couple of bruises on, on parts. And what you don't want is knocks and bruises on the gasket surface because it will leak, right? So before I put the valves in, I had that on my flat surface over there on some glass paper and uh, gave it a good going over to flat it out. Found a few high spots, took them off with a needle file, cleaned it all up. Give it a flat again, and we've got a fairly flat surface on that now, so it should be pretty good. I did the same on the uh, cylinder head side as well. As you see, a little bit of marking there where it's been cleaned up a bit. I uh, found one or two high spots, so they're all been taken off as well. Um, I did the same with the with the um, with the cases as well, and made sure there's any nicks and spots and dents taken off, so the gaskets will sit properly. Uh, now, normally you'd do that on like a granite block table, um, like an engineer's table. I haven't got one of those, right? But what I have got is a 600 by 600 uh, marble floor <laughs> tile, and that's pretty flat, right? It's about the flattest thing I've got. So you, you put a sheet of wet and dry down and move it around. So uh, that's all done. Um, barrels are all freshly machined, so I don't need to do that with those. So um, this is at the stage now. This is all ready to go. Um, I'm not going to put the cover on it just yet, just in case. Um, so next stage is put the barrels on, which are here, my nice shiny new barrels. Uh, Tappet blocks are already in there, I did that on a previous video. Um, so I need to put the pistons on, which go on there and you drive the good jump in through. Um, and then you put the barrels on. However, you have to be a bit careful when you're doing this, right? So pistons, obviously, um, with the right size, they're all standard standard pistons for these um, for these for these barrels. Uh, got a lip on that, slight lip on the top. So pistons, yeah, there we go. They're nice in there now. Just double check that. Yes, yeah, so they slide in well there. Yeah, the skirt seems a little bit tight in that. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Um, so you have to make sure everything fits. This is standard size, and these are standard size, so that should be okay. Um, but the rings on the pistons, right, there's a piston ring, um, you have to make sure that the right size, you have to gap your rings. Right? So what that means is, when this piston ring is on your piston, and it's in the bore, they close down like that. Right? Now, 
if these are absolutely closed all the way and they're in your engine, when your engine gets hot, they try to expand, they can nip up and lock your engine and seize it, right? So when the piston is in the bore and this is crushed down, there has to be a certain amount of gap um, there, right, to allow for expansion and contraction, which is specified in the workshop manual, so we need to gap those. So the way you do it is you get you take all of the rings individually, all right, and you get some, hang on a minute, You get your feeler gauges, all right, and you put that in the bore without the piston, kind of like this, without breaking them. Don't break your rings. All right, so you drop that into the bore like that, and then you try your different ones. What's this? Uh, Fifteen now. Just try that. Yeah, and that one fits right. So I've got to go through every piston ring. So both of the yeah, both of the uh, piston rings and the oil ring on both pistons mm -hmm. and measure them check that they're all okay before I attempt to put them in the barrels because otherwise it could end badly all right so I'm going to gap all the rings uh, getting pistons and everything ready to go on um, uh, I'm going to be looking at the yeah I'll do that bit first and we'll come back all right <laughs> slightly tight um, uh, but everything's within tolerance uh, piston ring gaps are slightly loose but uh, you know only by a, a fraction I'd to be honest I'd rather them be loose than tight so that's okay um, scraper rings are okay uh, compression rings are the ones that are slightly loose but you know they're okay um, so yeah everything's measured everything's good um, Rings are all there in order, in the right orientation, because the scraper rings kind of have to scrape downwards, and then there's the, the, the second compression ring is a tapered one, and then the top one doesn't matter. So um, they're all in the right orientation, ready to go on. Um, and I've measured everything for every specific side, so it's all going to stay side to side now. All right, so not interchangeable. Um, so I need to reassemble the pistons, put the pistons on the small ends. Um, then, uh, before I can put the barrels on, I need to put the tappet blocks in. Uh, tappet blocks have got the oil holes in, they go on the outside. I, actually, I don't think it really matters on this engine, but yeah, I'm putting them on the outside because they go on the outside. Um, so they've got to go in, and they have to be held in, otherwise they fall down into the cams when you're putting it together. All right? So, um, nice tip for that is when you put them in, you just put a zip tie around the top, pull that tight, and then they can't fall down. That's the idea. Um, so I'll do that um, once they're in there I can um, put a bit of sealant on the base of the engine and uh, seal the gasket down put a bit of sealant on this side as well uh, slide them over the pistons drop it in all together winner all right so um, yeah pistons together put them on first put the circlips in and everything make sure they're good and then we'll put the barrels on. Um, yeah, right, cool. So pistons are in, which is lovely, uh, so they're nice, um, they're never going to be this shiny ever again, so take a good look, um, actually if you compare it to what came off, yeah nice, right, um, so we've got um, pistons in, rings in, rings need spacing, 
um, they have to go 120 degrees, right? So um, three rings and you know, one there, one here, and one here, um, spaced around equidistant. What you don't want is your two compression rings with the ring gap in the same place, because obviously you lose compression through the gap in the middle. Well, that's the idea. I mean, in reality, it goes in and then round a the corner and then out. So it doesn't really matter, but it's good practice. Good practice. 120 degrees. Yeah, turn them all round by a third, all round by a third. Like they'll probably move a little bit anyway when it's running. Don't matter. Um, one thing that really annoyed me on these, right? And it's it's nothing that's wrong. It's just a personal opinion. I've got the circlips for the pistons. Came with it in the kits. And they're different types of circlips, right? They're the round wire type, not the square profile ones. But, um, oh, I don't know how to explain. Um, yeah, you've got a round wire type. One of them has got a double hook coming in, so you can pinch it with pliers, take it out. And the other one is a, um, a blind end with one hook. It doesn't matter that they're different. It really doesn't matter that they're different, but it's really screwing with my OCD. All right, oh, phew, circlips. Anyway. All circlips are in, all happy. Good and pins equidistant between the circlips. Uh, I've got to move the rings around. All right, it's um, gasket time. So uh, I've put some uh, gasket sealant around the bottom. I've got a couple of sleeves, locating sleeves that I need to put one there. So I've got one on, and I need to put the other one on. Um, I had to buy a new one because the old one went with the old barrels. Uh, so uh, yeah, get some gasket sealant on. I've dropped the um, cam followers in the barrels zip tie those so they're done get the gasket on and we can put the barrels on wicked Right, so gaskets on ready. I've got some um, blue sealant on the bottom of the barrels as well, ready to go on. Um, pistons are there. Now, what I don't have is any piston ring compressors. Um, I used to borrow some from work, don't work there anymore, unfortunately. Um, I have seen people use Jubilee clips and things like that, works quite well. Um, <clears throat> so, I'm going to do it old school, where I'm going to get my fingers around there, give it a bit of a wiggle, gentle wiggle, put it all back on. The dangerous way of doing it because very easy to break a ring. We don't want to break a ring at this point, all right? So, um, yeah, old school method. We'll see how it goes. So you know what, I don't want to break any piston rings and there's a good chance I will. So I think we need to make something. So that was an adventure, right? My 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 little um, ad hoc uh, homemade um, uh, piston ring compressors work a treat, actually. Are fantastic. However, when I was sliding the barrels down, these rings slid down the pistons to a point where I thought the rings are in the barrels, but I'm not quite sure that the, the scraper ring's quite in, right? So I thought I need to go just a little bit lower, but I need to hold the pistons up. So I need a smaller piece of wood. Anyway, I reached for what was near, right, and I found a pencil, right? Not this pencil. Right? I found this pencil. Then it fell down into the crankcase, right? Like a 
proper knobhead and dropped it into the crankcase which is a nightmare right for a couple of reasons right one is is difficult to get out right so i had to shake the engine bag anyway i finally got it out got it out broken right which means there's pieces of pencil in my crankcase right so anyway i got it out here's the pencil all right and then i had to keep going until i got all the little bits of pencil all right so there's a the next bit of pencil there, all right? And then there's the pencil lead, all right? There, and then this is the the last bit of the pencil here, all right? Which fits in there, which makes then an absolutely complete pencil and with a nice sharp tip still. So I found every little bit of pencil Oh, right, I said when I started filming these, right, I thought, right, I don't do editing, right, I'm keeping it real. This is the kind of screw ups that people make, and this was an epic one. So, you're welcome. Right, so now I'm going to put the barrels on. <laughs> Finally, got my barrels on, or oh, I've got my jugs on, as the Americans call them. So, uh, yeah, my pistons are in the jugs, my rings gapped, and uh, yeah, that's uh, all on, ready to go. Thankfully, after an epic screw up, I don't know how long this video is going to be. If it's like three hours long, sorry, um, <laughs> it's just a lot to do. Um, so yeah, so there we go. Pistons go down. I did put a bit of oil in the bores. Pistons go down, and then the pistons come up. There we go. There it is. All working. Lovely, lovely. So I've got. Um, bag of shiny brand new nuts now um you might remember when I took these off the nuts on the back two studs were like the the big one no good um I couldn't get a spanner in and stuff so I've got a bag full of shiny ones I'm not going to put them on though because I've got a load of plain washers down there they've got to go on first and they're all mucky so <laughs> I need to clean them before I put them back on so um yeah I'll get the washers cleaned and that bolted down uh, and that'll do me for today. Thank you for joining me. Um, got an engine now. I mean, we can almost start this now. A little bit of choking. I bet it'll run. Right. See you next time. <laughs>